Hello and welcome or welcome back to the Knits and Notions podcast. This is episode four. Um, my name is Kira and I use they them pronouns. Um, you may know me as at Strange Bun online and I am just so glad to be here for with you today. Um, since my last episode, I have noticed there have been quite a few new people on my YouTube channel. So thank you for stopping by and um, subscribing and for watching. Um, it's pretty exciting to s start my own different little section of my own little online community here in this space where I feel like my personality is able to shine through a lot more. Um, so yeah, it's been really exciting seeing everybody's comments and I do really appreciate if you leave me any comments on YouTube just because it's just like a really nice little reminder um, and just a nice place to chat and talk as well. I'm very excited today to talk all about my knitting um, because I've just been having a day. Um, it is Monday, so you know what Garfield says. <laughs> Um, but I've just kind of been like in a rut today and all I wanted to do was think about knitting and talk about knitting so I figured I'd just jump right in and get started with um, my knitting podcast episodes for this month. So I have a, quite a few things to talk about today. Um, I have this finished object that I'm wearing as well as some finished yarn and all sorts of fun stuff. So grab your project um, and something to drink. I have some kombucha behind me there, which I have been sipping because it is so hot here still. And I know that I look like it's a brisk fall afternoon, but it's not. <laughs> it's a hot fall afternoon here. And so I'm just kind of manifesting um, fall weather by wearing this outfit. So it's not working, <laughs> but I look cute. So it's great. Um, but yeah, so as a little catch up these past couple weeks, I've just been really trying to hunker down into the fall, into cozy season. Um, and this time of year for me is usually when I start prioritizing a lot of different things. Um, just living a little bit slower, um, embracing the kind of like slow lifestyle that I really enjoy to live. Um, and for some reason it always just comes out a lot more in the fall. I start baking and I start, um, I just recently restarted my sourdough starter, um, which has been a little bit like an ongoing saga for me. Um, like most people during the pandemic, I did start my own sourdough starter and then it died because I forgot to feed it and then I restarted it again. Um, and then it died <laughs> because I forgot to feed it. And now I'm on my third sourdough starter, which I have aptly named third times to charm. <laughs> and I'm really hoping that I can hold on to this sourdough starter and have it until I'm like old and I hate baking or something. I don't know until I don't want to use it anymore. Um, but yeah, so that's been really nice. I've also just been having a lot of fun just in the kitchen as like another facet of my making. Um, I made raspberry jam for the first time, which was really delicious and a lot of fun. And it was a lot easier than I thought it would be, honestly. Um, I made lemon curd just the other day because I had lemons sitting around. And I didn't know what to do with them. Um, so I curdified them <laughs> and then... Yeah, I've just been baking and cooking and doing all the fun stuff. Um, and it's been really nice to do that in the mornings here because luckily the mornings have been a lot cooler. And so it's they've lent themselves to the oven being on, the stove being on, and everything like that that I've missed doing during the summer. But other than that, you know, life has just been going. I've been um, getting more used to like the changes that happened over the summer, so with spicy surgery and then the new school year starting, um, I feel like I'm feeling a lot more like situated in my internship as well. And yeah, just things are just, you know, they're just busy. And I've just kind of along for the ride, each week feels like an adventure. And I just kind of like strap in and see what happens. <laughs> um, all the while trying to hold on to any uh, 
um, you know, tools I have in my toolbox in terms of like living life a little bit slowly and trying to really embrace all the things I love about making and my life outside of whatever career aspirations or things like that. Um, so it's been really nice. And yeah, I've just been really enjoying my time taking care of Spicy as well. She is currently trying to get back on her routine of eating hay um, because if you know bunnies and you know about rabbits, um, hay and like rough um, roughage, like fiber roughage in the form of grass hay and sticks and twigs and things like that are a really big part of their primary diet. They should be like, it should be like around like 80% of their diet. And so Spicy has not had as much fiber in her diet than she should have just because of her dentistry issues which obviously made it really hard for her to chew and so she was on something called critical care which is like a special bunny food which has fiber in it but it's not you know the same as hay um so we've been trying to coach her and getting her back into her hay eating um, and she's just been really sweet and just cute and I get to shop for her and get her some new types of haze to try and some new treats, um, which can be kind of pricey. And that is one thing that I think everybody who, if you ever dream of owning a house rabbit, um, or if you know somebody who does, I definitely recommend just making a big note that rabbits are a lot more expensive than dogs or cats <laughs> just in the day-to-day -day care even um i was pretty naive when i first got spicy despite all the research i had done i didn't realize just how expensive things could get especially when now spicy needs some pretty gourmet foods <laughs> so yeah it's been an adventure but i'm just happy that she's happy and so is my partner and we're just enjoying her enjoying her life and i think she's getting really excited because it's getting cooler outside ever so slightly inch by inch like each day it feels like it drops like another degree and we're like fall fall <laughs> um so yeah that's just my whole household is just waiting on fall basically i guess i'll just hop into what i'm wearing and then we can get into some of my whips and stuff um there's not too much just because as i've you know previously mentioned just life is getting busy what i'm wearing my very warm fall cute outfit um that i'm sweating through <laughs> is my boneyard shawl by stephen west which you will recognize from the last episode and I'll bring it around to show the full thing in all its glory. Ta-da! It's so cute. I love it. This was such a simple and easy shawl to knit. You know, you, you just look at it. It's just like so, it's so simple, so easy. You know, just like knit, purl, um, make one, and that's really all there is to it. And I just had this finishing garter border. Um, so I knit this with, as I mentioned in the last episode, Starbath dyes, BFL worsted in mustard. And something I will note is that this shawl, um, I believe in the pattern it calls for like DK weight or fingering weight yarn. And so there's quite a bit more yardage used in it. And I had about like 400 yards of this um, worsted weight yarn. And I still got a shawl that's like pretty similar to the size in the schematic of the pattern. Um, so yeah, I really just love patterns, especially shawls are just super versatile to substituting just any weight of yarn you really have. Um, so yeah, it was really nice to stash bust and finally use this yarn that has been uh, sitting around in my house for so long and I'm just glad to finally have it in a really lovely project um, and I'm just really loving wearing it you can even like wear it as this like cowl situation cowl cowl I don't know I never say that word it just sounds so weird in my mouth um, but yeah this could be like a fun look I really just like wearing it with this sweater um, which is my Felix sweater um, by, or Felix Pullover, I think, by, um, Savory Knitting, and it has, like, a pretty wide neckline, just because this sweater has, like, a whole story, 
it has like a sto whole story arc in my like life of knitting that I've talked about on my Instagram. Um, so if you're really curious, I'd recommend just like scrolling down to when I talk about this sweater or whenever I'm wearing it in a post and you can see what's up with it. But long story short, basically I first knit this sweater as my very first sweater all the way back in like 2021 at the very start of the year. Um, it was my big goal to finally start knitting like full garments for myself and this was the first one I ever knit. And I knit with this yarn which is Cloudborn Fibers DK, um, I think it's like 100% Highland um, wool that was on Closeout on yarn.com um, and it's just in this nice gray color. But yeah, basically the pattern calls for like Aran weight yarn. Um, I believe the sample is knit with like Let Lopi or... I don't know if it's Let Lopi or Plotu Lopi for whichever one of the Aran weighted one is. But one of the Lopi wools basically. Um, and yeah, I, I, did, I did a lot of substituting on this because I didn't really understand about substitution and yarn weight and all that fun stuff so I really just took a chance with this um, and it turned out well I think it is better suited for my climate as well just because it's pretty warm here um, pretty deep into the fall until it gets a little bit cooler but not as cool as some places to really you know necessitate lopi <laughs> here yeah I really like the pattern I will say like, I probably I don't know I wouldn't necessarily recommend it just because um, it's not super um, what's it called size inclusive it does go up to a 57 inch bust but it is also meant to fit with some ease so there's not too much room in those upper sizes so you know just keep that in mind I guess if you're interested in knitting with it um, I just felt like it would be silly not to mention it just because I do wear this sweater and I am going to so I, I do want to be open about the pattern but in the future and just how I knit now I try not to knit as many size you know non-size inclusive sweaters just because I think it's like a really big bummer when you know, somebody who fits in straight sizes wears a pattern that's not size inclusive and doesn't go up in the upper ranges at all. But then, you know, fat and plus size knitters are just like unable to knit it. Um, I just feel like it's kind of like, it feels like icky to me. Just be like, oh, here's my sweater. Oh, sorry, you can't knit it because sadly it doesn't come in enough sizes, you know? Um, so yeah, so I just mentioned that. Um, it is a great pattern, just very simple, um, but it's not... Yeah, the upper ranges are not as big as um, it would be nice to have them. So yeah, but yeah, that's my Felix and I wear it pretty often during this time of year. But I'm still not crazy about the fit just because, I don't know, I, I think I should just knit it with the recommended weight of yarn. But it is really nice to wear with like a little shawl just to kind of hide some of like the larger neckline-ness of it. So yeah. This is what I'm wearing on this hot fall day. <laughs> okay, so to hop into some of my whips, I only have around like two right now. My first whip is a very autumnal project, if I might say so myself. Um, I've just really been enjoying all the um, fall vibes, all the autumnal vibes, just thinking about curating my beautiful hand handmade like autumn wardrobe. Um, but this is the very small beginnings of one half of my Chaco vest, um, which is a pattern um, designed by Kiyomi Bergen, who is one half of the um, twin sister um, knitter designers, knitwear designers, um, the Bergen twins. Um, Sachiko is the other sister and they've published together like beautiful patterns. They also, you know, do their own patterns as well. And this is one of uh, Kiyomi's. So I'm just like, bringing it up to the camera a little bit. Kind of, uh, it's hard to wrangle a little bit here. You can probably see the stitch pattern better this way. Yeah. So this is um, knit with Holst Super Soft. Holstgarn Super Soft, um, as I've mentioned in my first episode, 
and it's knit in this really fun stitch pattern which is basically kind of like ribbing just with this like um, slip stitch detail so on the right side you purl three and then slip one with the yarn in back and since it's knit flat on the back side you just do you know the opposite of that and the slip stitch you actually purl it on the back so yeah I've just been really enjoying knitting this it's pretty slow going right now but I'm not too fussed about it because um, like I mentioned earlier you know I'm just trying to really embrace some of the slowness um, in knitting um, just because like you know most of my knitting like I'm a pretty quick fast knitter and when I really get going and just in a really big um, knitting phase in my life like I was this summer I can really pump out the garments <laughs> but currently I'm taking knitting a little bit slower as well um, just because that's just the phase I am in life so yeah this is pretty slow going um, and I'm really intrigued about it because this is also the first pattern where I'm seaming you know two pieces together so a front and a back so I'll be excited to you know update you all on how this all goes for me but i'm really enjoying it so yeah we'll see if i have enough yarn for this one um because in true kira fashion i stashed over for this because this is the whole scarn i've been having sitting around for so long um but i completely disregarded the fact that i'm holding it double so i have a little bit less yardage than i would have otherwise um so I might have to order more of this. I have like one more skein of it left. Um, and whole scar on each ball is like, it's like a 50 grain gram ball. And they're each like 300 some odd yards, I want to say, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and this is actually some yarn I got in a D stash. So we'll see if they even still have this color. I'm not, I don't even know what color it is. So <laughs> wish me luck, but I'm hoping it'll work out for the best. And if not, I might do like a color block situation. Who knows? I'm just having fun with this and I'm just no enjoying knitting it and just enjoying being able to stash dive as well. And my next whip is one that you're familiar with. I talked about last episode as you probably saw down there. <laughs> what it is, it is the progress on my queer immunity shawl as I'm calling it, which is becoming massive. So I can already just like feel what this is going to be like to wrap myself up into on cold mornings in the fall and in the winter. Um, so woo, as you can tell, I try to wrangle this any way I can. <laughs> um, I decided to opt to go to the pink. So the peony pink color with the golden green color is what I've been working on and just knitting away. Um, and I think once I run out of this green color, I'm going to just knit all the rest of the way in the pink. So it's kind of going back to like a solid color and then just calling it a day on this um, until I run out of yarn. So yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I just really can't wait to wear it. Um, so yeah, so yeah, that's a short one, but just a little update on how that's going. I think it's looking really cute. I almost forgot I also have a sock whip right now so this is a pattern by um, I believe it's they're called the forest trail socks by northern knits and pearls I believe I will put it down below my face I apologize if I got that name wrong it's just not coming up to my head right now but yeah it's a really simple sock pattern I'll try to show it to you by putting it on my hand I wish I had sock blockers but um, here, maybe it's better just to see it like this. You can see the it has like these pearl ridges on the front, and then it's just a very vanilla sock on the rest of it. Um, so I'm pretty pretty advanced through the foot. I've just also been like you know less time to knit and not really wanting to knit on these socks as much. Um, but they're a really nice knit and very simple, and I really like how they like match my shawl vibes with the the pearl ridges all down them. So that's very exciting. And I'm knitting this with Holstgarn Super Soft, also from my stash, and also another stash yarn, which is a mohair, which is naturally dyed by none other than the beautiful Starbeth Dyes, <laughs> Mina's yarn again. Um, and it was like a limited edition mohair, and this is in um, their colorway um, mushroom, which is also, again, very fall. It's all coming together. 
and it's all it's all a mess <laughs> but yeah these are these are really nice to knit just like you know not feeling as much of my knitting mojo on socks lately but i am looking forward to, to knitting them and finishing them so yeah i really want to wear these because i recently came into a pair of lundstone boots which i have been wanting for the longest time um my usual boots that i would wear in the fall and winter back home in the midwest were actually doc martens and mine kicked the bucket like hard after last winter like they are not winter boots in any regards but i wore them all the time in the winter and yeah the salt did a doozy on those um and i still wear them but they're just not as nice looking and also they were the vegan leather what doc martens so they had like a weird like plasticky film on the outside of them that peeled off um which is kind of a bummer but i no longer buy vegan leather goods and things like that for that reason just because they don't last as long and then when you're done with them you know and they don't look nice anymore you're just kind of stuck with this like heap of plastic um, that you can't really do much with so that's kind of a bummer i still wear those for yard work but i am looking forward to having a pair of blundstones um, that i got because somebody ordered a pair that um, didn't fit them so i got them at like a real big steal and i feel like these socks are gonna be perfect to wear with boots um, so i'm very excited to finish these okay and on to another um whip in spinning is this <laughs> <laughs> I'm so anticlimactic. Um, yeah, it's just like a very simple spin I've been doing on my Turkish spindle that I started over the weekend. Um, so this is just some light gray Coriadale um, top that I had just sitting around in my craft closet. Um, I actually got this wool from my old local yarn store, um, which is the Yarn Barn of Kansas, um, back in my college town and they on their website they were selling wool by the pound and i felt like it was a great way to support that local yarn store because when i lived there i didn't actually knit or anything and now i've just discovered like what a great resource i had just sitting right under my nose that whole time so i made an online order through them like and i bought this wool like well over a year ago when i first started spinning um, and I'm only now really getting into spinning a lot of it. So yeah, I'm just really enjoying these singles. Once again, I feel like there's just this theme of slowing down, taking time and spinning on this little tiny Turkish spindle and this really lovely Coriadale wool has just been really fulfilling that for me. Um, but it's not without a purpose. So this sing set of singles that I'm finishing up um, is going to be applied with this little ball, which might look familiar. So this is some of the wool that I had left over from my Artifacts of Appreciation um, Spring Sock Bat Set. And I had applied all of that together. I have it right behind me. I think, I believe I showed it on here. But yeah, this is some of the wool from that set, the yarn I made. Um, but I didn't have enough singles to ply this last little ball with. So I decided I was going to spin some of my own Coriadel wool because this blend has Coriadel in it. And I was thinking like this could be a really fun like Barbara Pole um, yarn that's going to have a really like marled effect to it maybe. I don't know. We'll see how this turns out. I don't really think it'll turn out badly. It'll just be a, an experiment. So hopefully next episode, I'll be able to show you what this turns out looking like. It's about that time. I'm going to take a little kombucha break. <laughs> I recommend you do the same. Um, maybe if you're not drinking kombucha, your tea, water, whatever, leave a comment. Tell me what you're drinking. <laughs> I just looked up and there's a praying mantis just on my window, <laughs> just like clinging on the window screen. So that's nice um that's actually something i noticed our yard has a lot of praying mantises during this time of year or praying manti <laughs> is that the plural i don't know but um when we first moved here actually i went out into our yard and i was doing some weeding 
and I had pulled some weeds up and I saw these little baby praying mantises on them and I just like swiftly put them back and I was like I'm so sorry I don't mean to disturb you um but yeah during this time of year I start seeing a lot of them in our yard so they're pretty cool okay so moving on to finished objects so beside this shawl that I showed already I also have a finished yarn and I showed this a couple episodes back but this is the finished yarn that comes from a 316 dye studio um, roving that I had from my friend who sent it to me in the mail <laughs> um, so my friend Rachel sent this to me and she's um, oh. Please hold, I have a phone call. Sorry about that, I <laughs> have my phone call. So as I was saying, my friend Rachel, who um, lives in Kansas, got me this roving um, from 316 Dye Studios, which I believe are based in Kansas as well. Um, and so this roving was a Shetland wool and silk combination, dyed in these really lovely greens and purples on a gray base and I just really love how this turned out. Um, so I tried something different with this yarn and what I basically did was I really wanted a lot of air, a lot of loft. Um, I tried to also draft this and spin it in a woolen type of way. Um, so the, the fiber preparation was woolen prep and so I wanted to keep with that in the way that I spun it. So I really tried some techniques I learned a little bit in yarn texture by Jillian Moreno, but I don't know how well they transferred because I spin um, on a spindle just by hand like that and not on a spinning wheel. So some of the techniques in that book are a little bit specific, I think maybe to spinning on a spinning wheel, I'm not too sure. Um, but it turned out really well. And so I really, I wanted to chunkier yarn and I really wanted to be able to see that fluff in each of the singles and then in the ply together to have it really plump and it's really squishy and soft and beautiful. Um, yeah, I might have to like film some B roll or something so you can just see the qualities of this a little bit better. Cause on my webcam, it doesn't quite do it justice but it has like a really fluffy wooly halo to it and I just like yeah I'm just feeling really proud of the end result so yeah I didn't get too much yarn out of it but I'm fine with that I, I love it nonetheless and it'll be really nice to use for like some accessories or something I'm not too sure what I should use it with but yeah it's just so beautiful I'm really happy with it I'm gonna go ahead and tie my little shawl for continuity with the beginning of the episode. That's all I have for you today. <laughs> I know it really wasn't much. And honestly, it felt like I had more stuff um, until I started filming this. And I'm like, oh, I really haven't been working on too much. But you know, I'm okay with that. Like, I think this podcast is just going to be a thing that's it's going to flux or, you know, be flexible and be in flux um, when I'm changing and how I'm growing through my crafting practice. Um, so yeah, I hope you all can appreciate that and, you know, acknowledge that as well, just because I feel like sometimes online as like online creating people, there's a lot of like expectation that you have to perform a certain way or to, you know, if my knitting podcast is not like an hour or a really long video, then people don't want to watch it or something like that. But I just feel like those expectations are just unrealistic because, you know, things are changing. <laughs> just things are changing. And especially with my crafting, um, just like sector in my life, things change a lot um, for me in different seasons. So yeah, I'm just, I'm still really enjoying crafting and making in all different forms, but it's just taking a little bit of a different avenue in my life lately. So yeah, I hope you all can appreciate that and share with me too if you find that your crafting um, productivity, I guess, changes with the seasons. Um, because it's like really interesting for me, like in the summers usually is when it it will decline but this past year it was like woo it went on a big uptick in the summer and now as the fall comes it's like kind of mellowing out 
but I do have a lot of projects in mind um, and things to look forward to, which, oh my gosh, I completely forgot that the West Knits Mystery Knit Along is coming this week. The cast on, I think, is like in three days from now um, when I'm filming this. So my next episode, you will definitely be getting an update on that. I'm very excited to see how my colors will turn out. Um, yeah, and I'm also just super excited to knit alongside, like, not only just, like, the larger knitting community, but just, like, so many of my friends that I've made in these past couple of years online. It just, like, warms my heart to think of, like, all of us just going through this at the same time. I don't know. I'm, like, geeking out. I love, like, knit alongs. I think it's such a great idea just for like community building and crafting and stuff so yeah I'll leave you all here for today um I have to call my partner back <laughs> as well so yeah thank you all for joining me and I'll see you next time bye